previously on Northwest Fishing Fanatics. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, come on. Let's go. Whoa, 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 whoa. We went back to the bottom. Woo, what do I got? Rife Lake, historically known as Mossy Rock Lake, is a reservoir formed by the construction of the Mossy Rock Dam, which is the tallest dam in Washington State. The lake stretches for more than 13 miles along U.S. Highway 12, and the total length of Rife Lake is 23.5 miles long. Rife Lake provides good fishing for landlocked coho, and that's exactly what we're going to be targeting today. But it also holds good supplies of bullhead, bluegill, crappie, trout, cutthroat trout, and rainbow trout. It also has large brown trout, from what I hear. Mossy Rock Park is a well-maintained park. There's a boat launch, fish cleaning station, swimming area, playground, dog park, horseshoe pits, volleyball courts, coin-operated showers, and wheelchair-accessible sites and restrooms. There is plenty enough room for boats, RVs, trailers, and tent camping. If you launch your boat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, there is no fee, but they do charge $10 for launching on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for legal holiday. It's so crowded. We are here. Oh, and look at that launch, huh? Way out there. Let's go. That is quite the ramp, huh? Wow. That is a, a long walk. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It's a heck of a ramp. Well, the weather is actually supposed to improve. We, got a, we have a little bit of a sprinkle right now. And it's supposed to stop raining. Well, it's supposed to get down to a five to seven percent chance of rain by 8 a.m. So we've got about an hour of this little misty sprinkle. Then it should clear up. It's not really a lake. It's a reservoir. And I have no idea where the fish are. 
I know they're out there in the water. Or out there in the water. We're gonna try to find them. Now, this is a pretty fancy launch. Now what they do is they have the ability to drag this ramp here up the launch, depending on the, the height of the water. It's pretty nice. A couple of months ago, I was here just to visit, to take a look, and the, the water was down so far that the ramp was exposed all the way out there past those uh, that marker buoy. There was no way you could launch your boat. Good morning, <clears throat> and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing with Gene. Today, we are on Rife Lake. This is a huge reservoir in Lewis County that holds landlocked coho. And so, although I've never fished this side of the lake, I have fished the complete other end of the lake, which is miles and miles away at the Tednopam uh, Park. So that's the launch on the other end. Uh, and that was at least 12, 15 years ago when my dad was alive. But I uh, have never fished this end. But down here, way down there, is the dam and because the dam is cool we're gonna go to the damn dam I'm just thinking that you know the concentration of fish are gonna be over there I have no idea why that's just how my brain is working so um, let's head over there and see if I'm right maybe we can find some let's go We are here. We were there. Now we're here. So as you can tell, the dam is in the background here. I don't want to get too close to the dam right now. I'm going to fish here and go around, go around the dam area here and then along the bank over there and hopefully mark some fish. Now, once we mark some fish, we're going to try to concentrate on that area. I don't know anything about this lake other than it's big. I drive by it two times, three times a week. Um, I always think about fishing it. And as I mentioned before, the last time I fished it was a long time ago and it was on the clear on the other end of the lake. So this is a new experience for me and I'm glad you're along. So thanks for joining me, I appreciate it. We are gonna learn this lake together. Actually, we're just gonna learn this tiny little spot, hopefully. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll learn something. So let's take a look. It looks like the fish finder is showing 305 feet right here. Wow, that is, uh, yeah, 305 feet. That is some serious depth. It's not marking any fish, so I'm gonna get the kicker started and we're just gonna deploy the downriggers. Now, the gear I'm gonna use is the same gear that I used on the last four bodies of water. Let's go over it. I can get it out of here. Okay. Same kokanee rods, same reels, same 20 pound test Power Pro. This Dodger, silver on the back. I put a rubber snubber on these. <laughs> I just can't get away from my old school thinking. Even though the rods are kokanee rods, uh, you tend to lose a lot of kokanee. Now, I don't know if it's the same here with the with the um, landlocked coho. If I recall correctly, back in the day, we used uh, rubber snubbers here as well. That could have been just a thing. But um, when I'm on Merwin and on Alder, those kokanee are fighting really bad. And even though these are good sensitive kokanee rods, I was still losing a lot of fish. So I'm thinking to myself that it can't hurt to have a rubber snubber on here. And so we're gonna give this guy a try to see if it helps increase our, um, not only our hookups, but uh, getting him to the boat. Okay, and then the the lure here is just a mini hoochie. Woo, uh, mini hoochie here with a smile blade. We're gonna tip it with some, uh, the orange maggots, gulp maggots. That's gonna be on this downrigger right here. The other rod is the exact same setup, combo setup that I use on the other four bodies of water. I think this is the deadly venom, I'm not sure, uh, but it's a half fast dodger. 
And you guessed it. <laughs> Rubber snubber. <laughs> uh, and this sherbet color hoochie. My wife loves this one. She was killing the fish on Alder Lake with this thing. And so uh, I'm sticking with these two things. Now, originally I fished Merwin in January, February. Then I fished um, American Lake. Then I fished Alder Lake. Then an unnamed secret lake in Thurston County. Uh, a friend of mine goes there all the time and I'd he doesn't, I'm sure he doesn't want me to divulge the location. Uh, and then uh, back to Merwin and where else? So, so this is actually the fourth body of water that I'm gonna deploy the same exact setup in the same fashion just to see uh, how we do. So this one on the downrigger is gonna be clipped 40 foot from the ball and we're gonna start at 40 feet on this downrigger. And then I'm gonna put a two ounce dropper weight, no, a one ounce dropper weight on the Sherbert hoochie uh, on the back and have that one you know 60 feet behind the boat because it's ready to deploy okay let's go ahead and get this one out <clears throat> 40 feet Go down 40 feet. Fine, there's six, there's seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one. Oh no. Forty feet. <laughs> okay. Set our drag properly. The rod in there, loaded. And we're fishing. We are fishing. Okay, let's get this one out. Now let me show you this Dodger here. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah. It's working perfectly, as it should. Now this one is going to be 60 feet. Oh, we have a big, we have a school of fish here on the surface. We have a school of fish right here. Isn't that amazing? It's crazy, isn't it? Look at that thing. Dam. That dam, dam, dam in the way. Yeah, I've never. This is the first time I've actually fished this side of the lake. Man, this is super cool. I mean, they got to barricade it off, of course, so you can't get too close to the dam. But isn't that something? There's a fish. Oh, there's a fish, baby. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, is he there? He's there. Let me slow it down a little bit so we don't put too much pressure on him. Woo, what do we got here? Oh. He's still on there. He's still on there. Let me get this long ass net. Okay. Into the net he goes. Well, how about that? Yeah, look at that. Look at that little guy. Oh, come here. Come on. Hopefully it's not too deep. It is not. Oh, it's a little landlocked coho. Look at that little guy. We're gonna revive him. Let him go, he's tiny. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. <laughs> he took off like a bat out of you know where. 
nothing to brag about, but hey, it works. Let's get this thing back out there. On the Sherbert Hoochie and that Dodger. Yeah. That's the one. That's the combo. That was fish number one. I have no idea how many fish we're going to catch. I'm happy I caught that one. As far as I'm concerned, it's a success already. Oh, fish just surfaced right there. <laughs> just come up to take a look at me. Fish number two, I just put it back out. Keep an eye on that rod for me, will you? Come on, into the net there, little guy. There you go. Woo! There is fish number two. I don't expect any of these to have any size to them. But it would be nice to catch a 10 or 12 incher. <laughs> and that was at 60 feet, like always. 50. 60 feet. Whoa, 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 there's one. Fish number three. And it's only been two minutes since I landed that other one. I'm trying to land that fish and I'm heading right to the bank. Oh man, look how close I got. It doesn't look that close on the fish finder, on the cameras, I'm sure. But that's 30 feet. Dang. Another fish. Just lost that other one. They like this sherbet color. I think I'll switch. I have another rod set up with the sherbet on there. I think I'll put the same exact setup on the downrigger rod. The downrigger rod hasn't caught a fish yet with that little tiny micro hoochie. Ooh, little jumper. There we go. The Sherbert Hoochie does it again. And these babies are small. They're only like eight inches. Well, no, yeah. Yeah, exactly eight inches. Kind of tiny, but cool to catch anyway. Nope. Gone. I would say that the that the rubber snubbers are helping. And I think the bigger the fish, the more it's gonna help. Sharp hooks and a and a rubber snubber. I'm gonna keep them on there. All right, let's see here. We'll just keep going. Oh, a fish right there, baby. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna turn around in a circle, so I'm gonna kill the motor for now. This one feels like a little better. It might be nine inches. Come on. There we go. That's fish number five. It's a little bit bigger than the other ones, but you know they're not very big fish to begin with. There's five fish, six fish hooked, five fish to the boat, one fish lost right at the boat. And so I'm keeping count because I really do think that these rubber stummers are, are helping land the, you know, the landing ratio. So I like these gulp maggots. Um, they work really well. They're clean. I'd be honest with you, 
I don't like making my own scents with corn. I tried corn, uh, bloody tuna, you know, all kinds of gar, you know, different types of, um, you know, recipes. And I have not had as much luck with that as I have with these simple gulp maggots. I was introduced to these things by Mike. You've seen Mike before. He caught a trophy steelhead on the Cowlitz River in one video. Uh, I've been crabbing with them. I've been fishing with them on, um, on lakes. We went to Merwin in January. I've known Mike for 10 plus years, been fishing together. Um, and so he's a fishing buddy of mine and we do all kinds of different fishing. And he introduced me to these things and ever since he's done that, you know, I've been using them ever since. They work great. And apparently they work great on all kinds of different bodies of water for all kinds of different species of fish. Uh, use them on kokanee, trout, uh, now landlocked coho. So thanks Mike, I appreciate it. And I look forward to fishing with you the next time. So let's get these things deployed and let's catch some more fish. Okay, now we are down. Oh, oh fish already. <laughs> I just dropped that. Oh, this one feels like a nice one. I just dropped that down with the same rig as this one. This one feels nice. It feels heavy. Of course, it could just be snagged sideways or something. Yeah, something feels weird. Oh, but he's putting up. Oh, yes. Wow. Take, whoa. Holy moly. This one's a good one. This one definitely is not one of those little six inches or eight inches. Probably a ten incher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Let's go. Whoa, jumping. Yeah. This one is definitely a nicer fish. Okay. Woo, come on, baby. Come on. Whoa, okay. Whoa, he didn't like that. He didn't like that at all. Whoa, where's he going? Under the boat. This way, this way, baby, come on. Yes! Oh my goodness, that is a beauty! Holy cow! That's what I'm here for. Right there, baby. Holy moly. That's a 14-incher. Yes. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, he was he was hog tied. Both hooks in him. That's why he was coming in weird. Oh my goodness, what a fish. Both hooks in him. That fish was going nowhere. Look at the size of that bad boy. That's what I'm talking about right there. Huh? That's a nice one. That's a that's a 14 incher. Look at that thing. Oh. Landlock coho. 60 feet. That is seven caught, six landed. Oh, that was a nice one. No, nope. oh, it's just a jumper. Go for it. There he goes. Swam away. Oh, fish on this rod. This one's got some head shakes to it. Might be a little bit bigger than that last one, but it's kind of foul hooked and that's why he's, that's why he's fighting hard. They last forever. I don't know what, oh, there's a fish right there. There's a fish. Let's kill it. This is fish number nine, <clears throat> and only one loss. Fish number nine, eight landed, one loss. What you got, 
fish. Come on. What you got? Oh yeah. Oh, I just threw my worm. Or now you might notice I, I let him out really fast. It seems like it's fast because I'm letting it drop plus I'm stretching out the rod and uh, just to get it out there faster, but I'm always keeping tension on it and making sure that it, it's not gonna drop and cause a tangle. Oh, there we go, there we go, oh, that's a good one. Woo, yes. See, and I just took that two ounce ball off there. Oh, jumping bait. <laughs> it's not that big, and it just spit the hook. Literally marking fish all over the place, sporadic fish, but there was a concentration of fish at about 25 feet. So you can see where I'm at here. The fish are sporadic, but there's a bigger school of, there was a bigger school of a little bit further down. It just got slammed. Oh, he's on there. Ooh, he's back there. Whoa, 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 holy. What's up with that? A little hitchy, woo. Wow, okay. All right, I like the action. Definitely like the, definitely like the action. Come on. Better size. Oh, come on. Come on, Gene. In the net. In the net. There we go. That's a better size fish than those small ones. He was not coming loose. Had that hook right in the corner of the mouth, right where it's supposed to be. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. Isn't that nice? Okay, so the official count is 13 fish hooked. 11 fish landed and two lost at the boat. Actually, one lost at the boat and one lost out there, so I counted it as a lost fish. That's a pretty good hookup to landing ratio, if you ask me. I think it has to do with the rubber snubbers, but I'm gonna keep the rubber snubbers on here. Uh, they don't affect anything negatively, so there's no point in not having them on there. So I'm gonna keep them on there and fish a few other bodies of water do, using the same methods to see if it actually increases it on the other lakes as well. So I've got the one large fish, it was 14 inches, and um, I wanted to catch two. So what I, my plan is that it's about, I've been fishing now for about two hours. I'm gonna head back to the launch and troll back to the launch. And if I catch another one, I can take home and have a good meal between me, me and my wife. That's my goal. If not, I'll have to share this one with her. Because <laughs> sharing is caring. <laughs> so, uh, just to recap, I've been fishing 60 feet on the on the surface rod, various depths with the downrigger because I keep marking bigger fish, you know, deeper. So I'm dropping it down, trying to get some of those to hit. Um, the surface rod has been really productive. Uh, the majority of fish have came on that uh, on that sherbet color hoochie. And the Dodger with the snake on it. I think that's the, but whatever it is, um, you've seen it. So I'm gonna head this way and hopefully we catch another fish to take home. Uh, and I just got slammed. Bait's good, but the <laughs> hooks are all messed up from him, the fish hitting it. Crazy, huh? Oh, there's a fish right there on the downrigger rod. Yes. Oh, he's on there. It's not very big, but he's there. Woo, jumper. Yes. He's a jumper. Okay. 
Again, we're gonna release this guy, so make sure we do not harm him. And he's got a light hook in his jaw. Oh, there he goes. Woo, took off like crazy. <laughs> go back 50. Oh, there's the fish. Just getting ready to set that one out. Yeah, since I don't have another line out right now, I'll just stop the motor and put it in neutral. Oh, shoot, now there's a fish right here. Oh, isn't that something? How far is that out? Oh, it's out 50. Oh, no. Okay, I got a double. Yep, he's over there. He's over there jumping. Hopefully he stays buttoned up. Get this one landed. Look at this one here is jumping, that one's jumping out there. It's a good little bit of chaos to have. I need one keeper to take home. Oh, come on. Come on, over here, over here, over here, over here. I don't know that this is worthy of the frying pan. Let me see, this guy's still on here. Yep, he's still out there. Oh boy, this one might be about the same size. Oh. Okay, let me get this guy in the net. There we go. Oh, this one's a little bit bigger than that last one. So I think I'll keep them both. That way we've got a good meal. Oh, this is definitely bigger than the last one. Not as big as the first big one. But, that's a good one too. Come here, baby. Oh yeah, this is the one, this is the, the, the corn dog fish, the one we're going home on. Whoa. So this guy is gonna go in the frying pan. Here we go. One is a whopper. The other one is not bad. They are both gonna be eaten. To recap the day, same rigs, 60 feet back on the flat line, 40 feet down, or 40 feet back from the down on the downrigger ball, 20 foot depth. Actually, I was going all over the place. This hoochie right here was killing it again. This dodger, this is what was doing it. Speed was about 1.5 to 1.9, and everything else was, you know, using the uh, everything else was the same. And I used the uh, the maggots like I did on uh, the other four bodies of water, other three bodies of water. Well, that's a wrap, folks. I got a couple of fish for dinner tonight, and the count was 15 to the boat and only two lost. So I am going to keep those rubber snubbers on because I do think it helps. It doesn't hurt anything, uh, so why not have them on there? Most of the fish that I found were over by the dam. Uh, they were spread out all over the place, but the concentration of fish was over by the dam. So if you guys come out here and fish, I would say fish on that north side where all the rocks are and over by the dam in front of the, in front of the barriers that they have there. And that's where the concentration of fish were. Although I did, like I said, found fish scattered all over the place. Thank you again for joining me on Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing Adventures with Gene, me, your humble host. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I would appreciate it. We are almost at 2,000 subscribers, and I got to tell you guys, I really appreciate it. I really do. I can't tell you how much. I see when I go to Sport Co. or Sportsman's Warehouse, or uh, even the other day when I went to Snyder Fuel to fuel up the boat, uh, there was a guy there that just got done fishing at CQ, and he recognized me and said, hey, you're that guy from YouTube. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's amazing. And it's all because of you guys. I mean, I would be fishing and, and, you know, making videos anyway, but you guys are watching them. So it's really humbling and I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, 
Yesterday when I came down here to scout out the launch, um, there was a guy who I talked to briefly and he recognized me and said the same thing. Hey, aren't you that Northwest Fishing Fanatics guy? And I said, yeah, he had, uh, he had his uh, three kids uh, out here with him yesterday and they caught some fish. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. There's more videos coming up. Uh, hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button and peace, love, peace, love, tight lines, and I'll see you on the water. Bye.